Now, the Democratic Republic of Congo is on a knife edge tonight after the deaths in protests. We reported on this program last night. The United Nations now says that more than 20 people have been killed in clashes between protesters and security forces in the capital, Kinshasa. Uh, protests sparked by President Joseph Kabila's efforts to stay in office beyond his mandate. Witnesses say troops are out in force in cities around the country and tear gas has been used against protesters. Kabila's last term expired last night, but the country's electoral commission postponed elections until April 2018. The president has invited the opposition to be part of a transitional government that he will lead, but activists say he just wants to cling on to power and must immediately step down to allow the country to to move forward. Well, with me now is Elsa Buchanan, Africa editor for the International Business Times, who's traveled extensively through the Central Africa region and has written innumerable articles about the political developments in the DRC. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, just what sense are you getting from your contacts about what's happening on the ground in the DRC now, following those reports of overnight clashes and now the UN saying they were, uh, they've got solid reports that 20 civilians have been killed in confrontations with security forces in Kinshasa? Yes. So, um, first of all, it's, um, it's worth noting that it's still very difficult for um, a lot of people to um, really understand what's going on at the moment, um, hour for hour, minute for minute, because social media and web connections have been blocked um, by the government following an order from President Kabila. So, you know, we, we are speaking to people who are um, in, in the major towns in Kinshasa, Mubashi, Goma, Bukavu. Um, many of them have spoken of door-to-door -door, um, kind of um, searches by the Republican Guards. Um, they've spoken about unusual uh, checkpoints where, um, you know, casual, uh, very ordinary citizens walking through um, were questioned about their political ties. Um, some say they uh, their money was being confiscated. Others allege their phones were also being confiscated. And just before I got here, I was speaking to um, some people within the opposition. Um, so the opposition, uh, the opposition's main coalition called Rassemblement, and they claim up to 38 people might have been killed in the clashes um, today. I can't independently verify this, but I know mm. the, um, the Human Rights Watch um, observers on the ground are looking into this. Given what you've just said, I mean, what are the options left to the opposition? Is it for their supporters to clash with security forces and possibly die in the process? So that's a difficult one. Um, it seems Kabila has played his cards very well. Um, there is a ban um, currently uh, in place in, in Kinshasa mm. against uh, protests. So anyone going in the streets today um, and protesting would be seen as, um, I'd say, illegal. Um, mm. Many times uh, we've seen um, officials talking about terrorists even. Um, anyone basically uh, going in the streets and right. chanting against the government would be considered one of those. And this, in a sense, gives Kabila um, and you know his forces legitimacy over the use of violence, as we've, as we've seen in your images tonight. Um, the opposition, at first, initially, said they would not um, agree to mm. call for protests, considering the, the level of risk of violence. Um, today, I spoke to the Hassan and they're currently looking into ways of having a strategy to continue what they, they've been asking right. and calling for peace. Well, I mean, one of the leaders of the opposition, Etienne Shisekedi, yeah. who I'm sure you're familiar with, has called for peaceful resistance to President Kabila. Um, the pictures we're looking at just now, of course, are from September. They're, yeah. they're not happening sort of overnight. Um, we're looking at opposition leaders now that, you know, opposition leaders. Uh, will, will people hearken to that call? Um, the people we know that are protesting uh, are not necessarily people who would um, define themselves as, you know, pro-democracy mm. activists, for example, because people within the Lucha, who I know, you know, work very closely with uh, mm. these opposition groups, have been calling for peaceful resistance. And we're looking at also. these pictures now. This is London, and so they're protesting not just in London, but in other places across the world. But as you're saying, it's not quite the same thing as protesting inside the DRC. Exactly. And, and because of the, you know, the, the potential deaths we've seen so far mm. and, and the increasing um, levels of violence, tear gas, um, you know, um, real um, bullet shots, um, 
you know, the opposition can't really call for big right. mass protests. Well, if, you don't mind, if I ask you this, the government appointed a figure, from my understanding, from the opposition as the new prime minister. I mean, I'm not sure what part of the opposition he's from and how broadly representative he is, but isn't that some gesture from President Kabila that could possibly move the country forward? So at first, um, disappointment, surprise, um, a lot of commentators, me included. Um, we imagine that uh, another opposition heavyweight called Vital Kamere uh, would be um, nominated. Mm. You have to understand also that uh, Sami Badibanga, who was appointed so on the 17th of November, um, was appointed so because of a political agreement Kabila reached with only a friend of the opposition. The rest of the opposition, the, the Rassemblement, rejected mm. this uh, political agreement. So, in a sense, Badi Banga isn't a legitimate um, right. prime minister for certain parts of the opposition. Second of all, um, he is a former ally to Etienne Tshisekedi, which is a political heavyweight. So, in that sense, it is a bit of, um, I say, a, a sort of a game Kabila might have been playing um, because. Badi Banga may have had um, some kind of, you know, attraction mm. um, within the opposition, but he defected. And in that sense, he's right. not seen as opposition, really. Right. OK. Elsa, we appreciate your coming in to discuss this with us. Elsa Buchanan, Africa editor of the International Business Times.